you can hear rush hour going on behind me. It's around six o'clock. Probably not the busiest time here in Kansas. I have another clip that I'll put up where there are a lot of commuters going and all that because I think particularly for people watching in other countries, it's interesting to watch what the landscape looks like, the type of cars on the road, the temperament, the advertising, everything that, that shows as one goes by. It's like there are tiny microclimates all over this area. There was a woodpecker that dashed behind the tree as I went by. Also, <laughs> I have to show this. A lot of people have been wondering what um, tick bites might look like. This is why, uh, <laughs> as much as I enjoyed the barefoot walking, I might have to wait until it's drier out or later in the year because these ticks can be really ferocious. And I remember one time, I think maybe I was around 12, I would helped do some yard work at my great-grandmother's house or apartment rather outside and some rogue chiggers got me <laughs> I must have had 300 bites around my ankles and up to my knee there's no itch like that really I mean obviously you survive it but it's annoying especially if you have to work or be concentrating on something. We had a nice rain yesterday. I expect to encounter a lot of blackbirds back here again. The robin's having a bath up there. And there are lots of baby rabbits that I've kind of startled a few times here. This should be a now familiar path, but every time it does look different to me anyway. Very, very, very buggy now. Anyway. Ooh, oh, I don't know what that was. Um, It's the first time I've seen anybody back here <laughs> in this particular area. Anyway, um, where am I going with that? I, I'm very out of it today. And I can't quite put my finger on why. I did have to get up very early today because a coworker and I switched shifts and it's my half day. So I was at work at seven instead of nine. And I must have set my internal time clock to wake up because I was wide awake at 5.30. I'm not a morning person. And right now at work, I think I've told most of you that I'm in a sales position where I have a base pay and then, which is a living wage really, for here. And then the rest of my income depends on commission. And my company is like that for all of the sales roles as far as I know, which I kind of like that because it does imply a sense of ownership of what happens and you do get to ride the, the fluctuations of what's going on and it doesn't hurt that we're in, a, in an expanding period but last week I had my highest the second highest sales week ever I assumed the the role of the top seller for a short while and then 
this week it's plunged again and uh, you either get very good phone calls and contacts or you get mired in problem accounts things that you have to continue working on and then something else comes along and that gets you off your game and I don't know how the social security cycle works in Europe actually and Canada I'm not entirely sure I think that social security and unemployment or what's called SSI uh, I, I think that's how it goes or sorry EI employment insurance that is paid out on the first of the month so they're the first I it's amazing how quickly you forget these things and in the United States it's typically the third of the month and so what happens is the last couple of weeks of that period if you're in business where sales affect your your livelihood or whatever yeah, the end of the month you get a lot of people just calling with really silly stuff like oh I'll send in this check at this time or whatever <laughs> and especially older people it's almost like they think of the person they're calling on the phone as the teacher or, or something to that effect. There's a lot of generational conflict going on right now that I'm observing in terms of how payments should be processed and when and why. People who want to have the tactile experience, which I think most people do, but most companies will not send out catalogs anymore and will cut special rates for people who do electronic payment through automation. And, and you just see more and more of this going on. And of course, the older people feel like it's discrimination. The younger people which I guess I still kind of fit in this category would prefer automation even if it means some threat to their own income stability. So I derive some income from converting people over to automated accounts but long term it may actually be working against me if I were to stay in that business and something else doesn't come to replace it. And then I was, there was a baby bum, uh, uh, bunny. I don't know if you saw it. Um, oh. Rabbits seem to literally leave the nest quite early. I think they have a very... Uh, their multiply rate and everything that happens makes... <laughs> makes things quite um, independent and scary for them. I, I remember reading that from 14 rabbits brought over from the UK to Australia. They had no competition on that continent and I think there's like 20, at least 20 million descendants from those original 14 which caused ecological problems for them. But back to accounts, we've all seen this happen. It's probably not as prevalent in Europe as it is here for instance a lot of these things are conspiracies like last year our department of motor vehicles in kansas or maybe just this county obtained some new software that turned out to be 
disastrous and people would sometimes have to take two days off of work and spend all day waiting in queue for for their um, just to be able to pay their their license fees for the year or the registration I'm sorry and then this year I noticed as I prepare to do my own I was out of the country last year they set up a price that you can prepay on the internet or by mail but if you go to the office I think you pay a $15 administrative fee which almost everyone with the choice will go ahead and pay this online and the employees are probably saying to themselves who you know don't want to deal with that shit but then they're ultimately cheating themselves out of a job and all of these things invariably devour themselves because once the infrastructure is in place and it becomes foolproof even the IT people will start to suffer so it's a really confusing thing to do and meanwhile all these perennially safe industries and activities are just up in the air right now and I am competing for a promotion actually I don't know who my competition is or what the exact situation is but I went to my two management figures to let them know what I was doing within the company because I believe being forthright is really important and if you set the tone for the discourse things tend to go better and people will typically wish you the best so long as you make it clear that you're not planning to make a run for it or anything just generally so I said that I oh here's here's the first sunflower type flower uh, wildflower I guess of the season you'll remember that this was all charred about two months ago um, this is probably going to be the longest clip I've ever made for YouTube and I knew that before I started um, the company is expanding and this uh, this position has to do with events and I have to really put my game face on again I do feel that in my particular situation the cards have told me repeatedly that I have to some kind of major jarring event is coming around August or September of this year I've known this for about a year and I'm not sure if it is going to be a promotion like this or if it means leaving the country again but I do know that I need some kind of adventure again I can sort of use my YouTube traffic as a sort of litmus test for what kind of state of mania I'm in or or what kind of opportunities are arising at the time and it all peaked around the transfer of when I went from Greece to Canada I think that even electronic things can pick up on your synergy 
I can't say that something really horrible is coming on the planet or anything like that, but what has really disturbed me in the last few months, this has always been the case in the United States, but we have a very superficial media cycle here. I think this is well known to people in other countries and to some extent here. But it, it, I also catch myself doing this and not being able to always control the train of thought that I have in terms of worldview. So I'll just think of the time since maybe around the new year. So we had the Newberry, Connecticut school shooting incident, which was probably the strongest reaction I've seen in a while. Or sorry, New, Newtown, Newtown. Before that, there was the hurricane, uh, Sandy. And these things are huge. And then a week or two later, they're just totally forgotten. Then, after that, the Boston incident, at the same time, there was the Texas fertilizer plant explosion. Then it seemed like we were going to go to war in North Korea, and then that's totally forgotten now. Um, The next thing was, what was it, I, this, the succession and transference is just overwhelming. Um, for me, the Woolwich incident in London was quite big. Just the brutality of that. And then now you don't hear a word about it, at least over here. Then, last, the turkey. Uh, violence which is quite personal for me I, I have been to pretty much all of those scenes before it's just really disturbing I can't believe that we're so bombarded like this and I was watching part of a series of lectures they upload really slowly on YouTube, but they are the RSA series. I forgot what that stands for. But basically, it showed how in the United States that the rate of reported ADHD increases exponentially as you head eastward in the US. And essentially, there's nothing defective about people. This is the most overstimulated time in history and there really isn't a way to be middle class or higher and not participate in it if you're starting from scratch I guess and Mm, yet, if you participate, you're, you're limiting yourself, too. I, I don't know how else to put that. I think that it's really disappointing that it's going down that way. And I catch myself being a proponent of this Orwellian lifestyle in a way, too. On the other hand, I don't know if I've said it here, but really, uh, the, the 90s was really safe and prosperous in the U.S. for the most part. I, I really remember it as people who were down and out 
either had extraordinary circumstances pulling them down or really just you know, made bad decisions in some ways here, at least in the late 90s, the way I remember it. Most of them happened to be girlfriends of my dad. <laughs> that was all in this really horrible small town. But even now, there is the stress of the threat of robotic labor bearing down on us. But most places are pretty peaceful. And this is a crossroads where you can call, call on bullshit. And it's going to really affect the course of how things go. Don't have to have violent overthrows. Don't have to to protest and march up and down and everything. Don't even have to say... Mm, I think it's a trap to blame individuals or to, to get too much into all of that. Just sort of shun and and avoid and mm, try to one by one boycott things that you disagree with and eventually the money and energy will follow the ethical lines because the bad things always need a market and that's one thing that cannot always be monopolized or controlled. I feel fortunate that where I'm at, I don't really have to to put myself in a rather an eth ethically compromised situation. But I had to save a lot of money and be very patient and waiting and pounce at the right moments to get something and the returns have not been exponential. I study to be a librarian and I might come back to that at some point but I really wasn't willing to totally let my personality be devoured by standards and um, uniformity. Done that. Done with that. And it's going to take people hoarding a bit of money so that they do have the ability to deign to choose where they are in order for that to happen. If you are in a debt cycle, then you're going to have to do a lot of things that leave you morally compromised. And it's always going to be a catching up game where someone else is setting the tone and the rules. I guess you could say my mind is on this quite a bit right now because I just finished reading Cloud Atlas and this book I've probably read faster than any other for quite some time. Though it is a challenging book because of the dialects of um, going from the 18th century to I guess the 25th or 26th century. And the common theme, without giving spoilers, is slavery and, and bullying through the ages, I guess. Extracting labor from people and keeping them in a position where they are subjected to enforcement in such a way that they cannot gain a foothold in property or autonomy. And 
I think that the financial reforms that took place in the 20th century have been very interesting and clever in the way that they seem to have opened the kennel door in many ways, but there is still that debt factor of indenture that limits expression. For instance, here I am free to do as I please. I could buy pretty much anything I want without having to secure a loan. And I can pretty much say whatever I want, but if I'm fully honest and fully express what my rights are or the rights of others, even the most upstanding company will not really be able to bear that because the market forces are such that you would be expendable and inconvenient to deal with in that case. Fortunately, I haven't really needed to do that here. And in the past, I, one thing about younger labor is that they're always willing to the ego is present enough and you have enough energy to cooperate and set the curve higher when you probably shouldn't. At the same time, apathy and disengagement are crimes of their own, in my opinion. But I do recommend that you read Cloud Atlas. I hope to see the movie soon because it makes you question your interactions with everything that you're you're transacting all the all the subtle power plays and to those of you who've been watching for a while i hope that you get the time to read the celestine prophecy series as well because we all need to be very aware of how we are verbally dominating others or crowding them out, suppressing them, or letting them do the same to us. Anyway, I hope that makes sort of a coherent statement of events, and I thank you for watching. Bye.